I'm going to enjoy your railway series, folks. Hello, preschool guy. What am I supposed to say to that? Huh? Hey there, my name is P. Reese Cool Guy, but you may call me the preschool guy. In reality, I'm my twenties, but at heart. I'm only twin and a half years old! Oh, that was so 2012, girlfriend. But enough of pouring out to the camera, which is something uh, I usually do anyway. What are you supposed to be, exactly? I'm glad you asked, my son. You see, I'm David McKee. David McKee? David McKee? David McKee? That was Tony Ross is doing. I made other cartoons that have sparked the creativity of children's reading for many, many years. Oh yeah, because it's so popular, I've never heard of it. Well, maybe it's time you started. Sit down, preschool guy, and we'll watch a perfect example of one of my stories. Hmm. I'm Mr. McComforter, if you say so, whatever it got. Well, I guess I gotta go sit back on this chair because I guess this is my usual spot, if you want to call it that. Okay, so, Mr. McKee, what kind of cartoon have you in store for me that has so many people at your beck and call, huh? Elma. Yes, Al. Well, we're off to a good start! There was once a herd of elephants. Elephants young. Elephants old. Elephants tall or fat or thin. Alright guys, if you want to spend more time being visually creative and less time repeating the same trumpet notes over and over again, I would greatly appreciate that. All that is, except Elma. Elma was different. Elma was a German spy for the Russians. Elma was patchwork. Uh, oh, yeah. He was pouch one too, yeah. Actually, that begs the question! How did Elmer get like that anyway? Was it a fashion warehouse accident gone wrong? Was he a superhero? Was his mother a quilt and his father a blanket? What? What? Oh well, let's just say it was all part of God's plan. That's always the right answer. Sometimes he joked with the other elephants. Sometimes they joked with him. <laughs> hey, Omer, can you see the rainbow connection yet? Yeah, is the sky filled with diamonds? <laughs> Do angels exist? Jerry, you, you, you just ruined it. Whoever heard of a patchwork elephant, he thought. No wonder they laugh at me. Now, that's no way for a secret manic depressive like you to act at all. You should have contemplated suicide by now. 
In the morning, before the others were really awake, Elmer slipped quietly away. I'll show them about respecting my feelings, even to have to spam them with negative comments 24-7. That'll fix everything, even my freakish colorings! You know what? Looking at it from a critical standpoint, this cartoon isn't really that bad. I mean, there's nothing offensive in it for kids. It's just your basic ugly duckling story, except it's kind of mellow. You know, it's something that I could get into. Well played, Mr. McKee. Well played. You're welcome, Mod Sports. <laughs> yes. So anyway, what I want to know is how in the name of Satan's portion is good old Elmer going to, you know, get the recognition of his fellow tribe, huh? Elmer found what he was looking for. A large bush covered with elephant-colored berries. Uh, how are berries going to hide your shame? Elmer lay down and rolled over and over, this way and that way, and back again. Then he picked up bunches of berries and rubbed himself all over, covering himself with berry juice, until there wasn't any sign of any yellow... Oh, well, you know what? This is fantastic! I've always waited for this opportunity to do this precise, you know, unbelievably funny joke, but now, Elmer, you've forced me to do it. So, here we go. <laughs> you see, boys and girls, this is what happens when... When Elmer rejoined the other elephants, they were all standing quietly. One of these elephants is not like the other. One of these elephants does belong. Huh. I wonder where that originally came from, anyway. Elmer felt that something was wrong. But what? He looked around. Same old jungle. Same old bright skies. Same old rain cloud that came over from time to time. Man, this narrator really gets a kick out of his same job, old. doesn't he? It's sort of like, Elmer looked around the same old jungle, the same old sky, and the same old rain clouds. Yes. In fact, an earlier scene could have been like, Elmer rolled around the berries, this way and that, and back again. Oh, oh yes, you're a dirty little back of time, aren't you? Oh, oh, oh. He could bear it no longer. He lifted his trunk, and at the top of his voice, he shouted, <laughs> Okay, okay, I think we have a contender for best wailing vocal sound now. Next to the drummer guy, of course. The elephants jumped and fell always in surprise. Oh my gosh and golly, they said. Nice control of your almost fatal heart attack there, guys. I mean, if it was me, I would be all like, Oh, Elmer, you motherfucker! But of course, the elephants seem to get a kick out of this joke, which they think is the best ever, but with quiet taste. It didn't take you long to show your true colors, eh? <laughs> So how do they award Elmer with such joy and happiness? We must celebrate this day every year. This will be Elmer's day. All elephants must decorate themselves. Oh no. If one Technicolor baggy dome wasn't bad enough, then... What will happen if Technicolor Pachyderms is really too much for me? <laughs> I am not oh no! They're colorized! And now they're gonna the colorize me! Give you a lawful sight! Take some away! Take some away! I'm oh my afraid! God.
face. That was unexpectedly scary. Especially that ending. What? What's happened with me, Mr. McKee? Were you really trying to scare us kids with some sort of movement like that, huh? Why, no, of course not, my son. It's just my own way of pouring into the children's mental states, leaving nothing behind but fear. That way, they will continue to remember this shot for always and always and always. Another one, dear sir? Yeah, sure. I've got a uh, time for another one. <laughs> Pouring into the children's mental state? Could that mean... So what's next? Not now, Bernard! It's race shot, rotting idiot! But okay. <laughs> this story has a young boy named Bernard, and he's going through that normal phase in every child's life where his parents don't give a crap. Not now, Bernard. Not now, Bernard! But hey, what do you expect when you have Lord Byron here as the narrator this time around? Quiet, you stupid boy! Can't you see we're dying? There's a monster in the garden, and it's going to eat me, said Bernard. Well, despite his parents' complete and utter silence, maybe the little twerp deserves it for making such a ridiculous story. <coughs> uh, what? 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 What is it? What's... 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 Mommy! Why did the Tasmanian devil eat body the dinosaur? <laughs> well, in that case, someone better alert the local authorities! Oh heck, even the freaking military to combat this... The monster ate Bernard up. <laughs> Every bit. What am I supposed to say to that? Did it, a little boy, an innocent little boy, gets eaten up by a monster for breakfast? I mean, what? What am I supposed to say to that? Um. Where's Al Khan when you need him? Mm -hmm. Oh great, the monster's gonna eat the boy's parents as well. Good. Maybe this will teach them some proper agony in their final moments of- Not now, Bernard. Said Bernard's mother. What? No, not now, Bernard! That's it. I'm convinced. These parents hate kids. They absolutely despise every walking hunk of sperm that exists in this entire world. <laughs> Even though they're blind, which would explain why they never open their sodding eyes throughout this entire picture. I'm a monster. Said the monster. Not now, Bernard. I'll abuse you some more tomorrow. Pleasant nightmares! What a horrible cartoon! So, what? If your parents hate you enough, you get eaten up by disgusting monsters? That's just terrible! I mean, is there any way that this cartoon could have got more weirder than that? Here we go! Here she comes, thrown in! Is that... Towser? Oh! Uh -huh. Towser, you flippin' idiot! The very thing that you created in the television of the television screens! The very thing that makes me all gooey inside just to think about it! Idiot! That wasn't my creation. That was Tony Ross. I don't care who made it! You headlined it, you perfected pile of plum plops! You signed on to put that dog on the television! I know! He's made a cameo in your very own adapted story! Oh! You must be very happy! Please! Excited! Enchanté! Over the freaking moon! Well, that wasn't my creation. Are you happy? That wasn't... Are you happy? I didn't make it. <coughs> Not mine. Oh! You are sick, well happy! You dismal, moaning, British twat! What? You do a job that half of mankind would kill to be able to do, or you can sex with the other half as often as you like. I just need to know if this makes you sudden happy. 
I never made Towser. <laughs> You seem to be having a nervous breakdown, Mr. Preschool Guy. I guess I'm not into the physical side of things, like all the other miserable, spoiled children on Earth. And I swear, if I ever go over the top like that, I would probably destroy an entire apartment complex just with my own screams alone. But instead, I'll take a few of those gross brats. So one more of my cartoons for the road, me old trader. Oh, yeah, I've got time for one more. And thank goodness there isn't a time limit on Blip or anything. That would be a problem. <laughs> Miserable, spoiled children. That confirms it. David McKee is one of the erasers. But something's odd. This energy. This is just like whenever I riff tells her. That he was the one who- Oi, Lucy boy! Are you gonna watch this cartoon or sit there and make silly faces all day? Silly faces! Oh, I mean, whenever you're ready, old sport. The sad story of Veronica who played the violin. Well, the story's gonna have a happy ending. So the story, as you would expect, tells of a young girl named Veronica who loves to play the violin. The only problem is, she sucks worse than... Uh... Actually, are there any bad classical musicians? Gomer Dinkins, you could win a free mention in the show! Yeah! But she does get better over time, and makes more people cry with any musical instrument than... Oh, well, um... Good examples? Come on into the subject too, lovely one! There's a double mention in it for you! Woohoo! I have to practice the violin! said Veronica. Actually, in all seriousness, the music they use when she can play is pretty darn good, especially for a kid's cartoon. I mean, how can you not get the tiniest bit emotional when an instrument like this is played everywhere? I mean, it's a freaking violin! A true example of heaven sampled into the human world! It is that beautiful. Even makes Todd Flanders look badass to boot. What's not to love? I especially love it when this guy who looks like a car salesman mixed with Adrian Edmondson tries to make her a star. You're the best thing I've ever heard in my life. Please, sign your name on the dotted line. You're fantastic. Please. Now, someone who looked like Rick Morrow running around in a gum costume came up to me offering a job. I would take it. Yes, I know it's weird, but it's my fantasy. So kindly shut your noise hole. Mouth of them. But one day, and I do mean that literally, Veronica says, Enough. All I've ever done is play the violin. I want adventure. I'm off to the deepest, darkest jungle. Wait, what resources would that have against combating the dangers of an uncharted jungle? Don't worry. My violin can calm the fiercest beast, smiled Veronica. Well, okay, but you know, that didn't exactly work for the Lion King on Broadway, but you know, best of luck with that, old girl. <laughs> so she makes it to the jungle and has these jump-cutting huntsmen to look out for her, you know, clearly doing their craftsmanship proud. That is, until a lion, a tiger, and a bear Ambush them! Actually, I'm a snow leopard. <laughs> okay. Ambush them, and the hunters jump cut to safety, despite having armed weaponry and being paid to protect this young prodigy to boot. I don't know. Leaving Veronica with only her violin for protection. And guess what happens? <laughs> The animals stopped and listened, but they didn't cry. After days of not playing, the music sounded different. It was still beautiful, but now it was happy. Wow. 
animals began to dance. That's kind of sporadic. She played sad music, now she goes all Texas hoedown on everyone? Isn't that sort of like Ian McKellen going from Lord of the Rings to the Magic Roundabout? Well, thank goodness that the Americans don't have that kind of humiliation to their resume. Great, thought Veronica. Enough of all that crying. When I get back, the streets will be full of happy, dancing people. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's really, really inspiring, you know. She wants to make people happy after so many years of sadness and depression upon our country. Which we thought was lost from hope anyway, but Veronica, she... She never gave up. Not even when she was about to be eaten alive by a group of wild animals. Truly, she is the Messiah. Reborn once again on this plane. Just as the scriptures said that they would. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I say we follow little Veronica's example. Take to the streets and fill them with praise and hope once again. <laughs> She never even knew what had happened. What have you done? cried the animals. That was the most beautiful music we've ever heard. <laughs> the old lion put his paw behind his ear and said, What? Our Messiah is forsaken again. All of which explains why the streets aren't full of happy, dancing people. You bastard! Oh, what now me for the sticky wicket? You brought Jesus back! to the plane of this earth just so that she can be killed again this time by literally wild animals? I mean, why would you fill us up with so much hope and praise upon the streets only for it to be taken away by your horrible, horrible storytelling? Just what do you have against humanity there, Mr. McKee? Just what have we done for you to do this to us? I have no idea what you mean by this, my son. It isn't my fault that my stories are so down to earth, but for this realization that I have placed in this children's story, I hope that I can one day take, take away all positive emotions from the world and replace them with negative. Even all of humanity's beloved memories will be a stain of guilt on the soul. Why, I can use them to take away their life force before they can blink. And should they have relatives or loved ones? Well... More misery to go around, eh? Well, hello there, Blaze, me fellow blighter. I'm David McGee. Sorry if I go to my dark side during our time together. I have a split personality disorder that I have had since I was born. I can sometimes affect my work as well as my personal life. But don't worry, though. As long as you don't bore me with anything, I'll be more than happy to turn you into the dark side. Together, the races will take the nostalgia of everyone's hearts and turn them to pieces. Then all will know the true meaning of... 
sorry. I forgot I had satanic powers there for a second. <laughs> but don't worry though, he's uh, gonna get his in about 24 seconds, I reckon. But anyways, so remember, boys and girls, if you're ever hidden by a memory that really gets you down and really gets you depressed, just take three steps from me. Say, whatever. You smack that memory across the face and go get yourself a Happy Meal. Works for me. It wouldn't work if you get a sad meal because that'd be stupid. But anyway, I'm the preschool guy, and that should have been 24 seconds right about. Oh, no. Well, at least better than Christmas, I suppose. Oh well. If you excuse me, I have a lot more races to race. You know what they do. The erasers are assembled, you radiants. I thank you all for attending. Very well. I call this meeting to order. You are all doubtless aware of the purpose of this session. We Let are discuss the current mission at hand before our dreams can be fulfilled. The so-called savior from the old world. He must be destroyed. But how can that be done? That crap took out Hawkins and the key without breaking a sweat? Exactly! And that is not the bed that would pass to his hands too! The monster! Science! I can show you that one of them is alive, and that you three will not go down so easily. But with all our protection, your testimony upon the world will all be for nothing! You are the one who assembled us for this resolution! Now you must lead us to glory! Yes, and before the seed of evil has this way with the rest of us. The foul demon will stay in our perfect sanctuary before the both of us died! Enough! Squabbling like petty children will not get us anywhere. You all know your duties. Carry them out and stay in the world of our ethics. They'll leave a scar, no matter if the boy should approach any of you. But. Should he try to ambush me? Don't worry. I have a new member to join our council. What? How dare you think equal to us? How does this fool expect to fulfill our holy plans? I, I follow that. And she will win, even if all of us fall. Come forward. Eraser number seven, Kitty Fiora. The promised day is near. Now, teach those who speak of a savior the futility of their hope. 